Hi, I'm Mark Rudner from the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen, and I'm here to introduce this week's lesson on Floquet topological insulators. Over the past several weeks, you've learned all about the intriguing world of topological insulators and related phenomena. It all began with the quantized Hall effect, which, as Addy mentioned, really is one of the most beautiful things in all the world. Not long after its experimental discovery, Fowlis and co-workers realized that the incredible stability of the quantized Hall plateaus could be understood in terms of topology. The value of the Hall conductance on one of those plateaus, when the system is in an insulating or a gap state, can only take on certain particular values, which are determined by the topological features of the system's ground state wave function. Okay, now fast forward 20 years or so, and the discovery of the quantum spin Hall effect triggered an explosion of growth and activity in the new field of topological insulators and superconductors. So what happened in this time? What has changed? What's new? Well, in addition to many important conceptual and practical or experimental advances, there's something else, I think, which is very important to emphasize. In this time, topology has really shifted from being an explanation to being a guiding principle. Look for topology, and interesting physics is almost sure to follow. So at the same time with all these intriguing theoretical developments, experimental capabilities have been increasing and increasing. In particular, now experimentalists have unprecedented levels of control over the dynamics of quantum systems using either lasers or coherent microwave fields. And so we want to try to put these things together and ask, you know, what kind of new interesting non-equilibrium quantum phenomena may be possible in strongly driven systems? Now, if we were to just sit down and say, what kind of interesting phenomena can we find out of equilibrium? You know, the question is too broad. We don't even know where to start. So one thing we can do is take a page out of the history books. So we know that in equilibrium systems, topology has been very useful in finding interesting and important new phenomena. So why not ask, you know, what kind of topological effects might we find in driven systems? Now, focusing on topological effects in driven systems may have other benefits as well. In particular, since we know that topological effects are typically very robust, we may hope that they have a, a particularly good chance of surviving in the inherently non-equilibrium setting where they're defined in a driven system. Once we focus our attention on topological effects in driven systems, there are two classes of phenomena that we may look for. First, we can look for some kind of phenomena which are analogous to those that we already know about in non-driven systems. For example, is it possible that by driving some kind of topologically trivial material, we can get it to behave like a topological insulator? For example, maybe some, some kind of robust edge states will appear, or even a quantized Hall conductance may emerge. The second type is to look for some totally new type of topological phenomenon which has no analog whatsoever in a non-driven system. In fact, We've already seen one such example in this course, Thales' quantized adiabatic charge pump. You see, there, topology is associated with a dynamical process in time, not with the ground state wave function of any kind of static Hamiltonian. Now, once we extend the topological classification to periodically driven systems, we'll find both that a very natural and intuitive explanation or picture for this Thales charge pump will emerge. In addition, we'll find you know, other new types of uh, topological phenomena which have no analogs in, in non-driven systems. So before setting you on your way, there's one more point I'd like to address. A second ago, I mentioned that we would be extending the topological classification to periodically driven systems. In principle, we might consider any generic kind of time-dependent Hamiltonian which describes a driven system. The problem is, we have very few tools at our disposal to actually analyze the behavior of such a system. Now, if we focus our attention on periodically driven systems, where the Hamiltonian repeats itself every multiple of some driving period, call it capital T, then we get some quick benefits. In particular, the discrete time translation symmetry that comes along with periodic driving means that there's a conservation law of quasi-energy, very similar to how in a crystal, translation symmetry of space is broken, but there's still a discrete translation symmetry, which gives rise to crystal momentum conservation. In the driven system, we have quasi-energy conservation. And just like crystal momentum lives in a Brillouin zone, it's a periodic variable, quasi-energy, the energy-like variable of the periodically driven system, 
itself has a Brillouin zone. So energy, or quasi-energy, is a periodic variable in the driven system. Now, the existence of this quasi-energy spectrum and its associated eigenstates give us the, so the basis for the beginnings of some kind of topological classification. However, the periodicity of quasi-energy drastically changes the topological features compared to what they were in the non-driven case. And we will see that this gives rise to all kinds of new and interesting behavior.